So here we are. Welcome to today's, this evening's, this morning's uh, session with Blue Canoe and Color Vowel. I'm Karen Taylor. This is our Thursday night gathering of teachers and learners together. This is a beautiful type of gathering because uh, the teachers get together fairly regularly. And then once a month, we have our learners and our users of Blue Canoe in the room. So if you are a uh, learner, user, welcome. We're so glad to have you. Uh, tonight's topic is the question of three colors on the chart that have attracted you to the session. And so let's start up with the chart, warming up, and then we'll move into that topic, okay? Um, so please, all of us are muted, uh, but repeat after me. You can take out your dominant hand. We're going to use it to focus our mind's attention on the vowel sound in each anchor phrase. So here we go. I'll point to me and I'll point to you. Listen, repeat. Green tea, E. Green tea, E. Silver pin, I. Silver pin, I. Gray day, A. Gray day a red pepper a red pepper a black cat a black cat a olive sock a olive sock a auburn dog a Auburn dog, aw. Turquoise toy, oi. Turquoise toy, oi. Orange door, or. Orange door, or. Rose boat, o. Rose boat, o. Wooden hook, o. Wooden hook, uh. Blue moon, ooh. Blue moon, ooh. A cup of mustard, ah. Uh. A cup of mustard, ah. Uh. Purple shirt, er. Purple shirt, er. White, sorry, brown cow. Ow, brown cow, ow, and white tie, I, white tie, I. Great. So this is a standard warm up that we like to lead you through each time we meet. It reminds us of the vowel sounds of English and gives us some time with each sound. And each time we do this, we can maybe notice something new about our experience with these sounds. And whether you're a learner of English or a native speaker of English, we will all have a relationship with these sounds of some kind or another. Good. Now, um, as we move along, I'll ask Liz, I'm going to further deputize you <laughs> to ask burning questions that come up in the chat, okay? okay? And that means for everybody, if you have a question uh, for the moment, Liz will be watching those questions and will raise them with us so we can answer them, okay? Thank you so much. So tonight's topic, let's spend a moment looking here. Um, its title is one that I chose with some purpose. Uh, title of tonight's talk is Olive and Auburn and Orange, oh my. And if you don't already know the reference to this phrase of this and that and the third thing, oh my, it is a movie reference. So I'll share the movie reference just for some fun. Um, if you don't, if you haven't seen The Wizard of Oz, you may still have heard this phrase and here is where it comes from. Suppose we'll meet any wild animals? Mm, we might. Animals that, that eat straw? Uh, some, but mostly lions and tigers and bears. Lions? And tigers? And bears. Why 
lions and tigers and bears. Oh my! 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 Okay. <laughs> now the scary part comes. Um, so the lions and tigers and bears represent the things that give us concern, the things that make us worried. And often we receive questions about these three sounds. So tonight's talk is olive and auburn and orange. Oh my! And that's the reference. Let's move along. Um, go ahead and say olive, sock, ah again. Ready? Olive, sock, ah. Great. And now say auburn, dog, ah. Auburn, dog, ah. These two sounds may sound the same or they may sound different. So in a moment, we'll spend some time with those. And then there's a third question about orange that often comes up. So we'll visit that. But first, here's a task for you. You're going to answer for each word that I give you. Is it olive or is it not olive? For example, if I had a word like, hmm. Oh, hold on one second here. What happened? <laughs> I've never seen this show anyway. There we go. Is it olive or not? There we go. Okay. I'm going to actually show you something slightly different that you will still enjoy. Here we go. Just a little malfunction, but it's worth it. Here we go. All right, so here we are. I'm going to give you these words and you're going to decide, is it olive or is it not olive? Call. I want thumbs up for olive and thumbs down for not olive, okay? And I'm gonna do my best to see as many people as I can. Oh, I see the whole room, this is beautiful. So thumbs up if call is olive and thumbs down if it's not. And I want you to also look at everybody in the room. If you can, try to scroll through the faces and see, is it thumbs up, thumbs down? So I see some up. Do you see that? See how some people are up and some are down? Can I tell you that you're all correct? Yeah. <laughs> you're all correct. So, and I truly mean that. I'm not trying to make anyone just feel good. I mean it, that you are right. Um, for some of you, call matches with olive sock, and for some of you, call does not match with olive sock. And the difference is not whether you speak English as a first language or second language. It has to do with other factors, okay? So I'm going to pick right now, I'm going to pick one person to follow, and I know who I'm going to pick. I'm going to pick Dr. Robin Barr over here. Uh, everybody say hello to Dr. Robin Barr. Dr. Robin Barr is from Chicago. Uh, she has a different accent than mine. And That's so Chicago. <laughs> Auburn <laughs> dog, Chicago. Yes. Exactly. Good. So she's from a part of the country that I'm not. And she's a really good example of a different accent than mine and than some others in the room. So Robin, um, so everyone said call and we did this. Robin, for you, is call Auburn or not Aub um, olive or not Aub olive? Not olive, it's okay. Auburn. Okay, great. So right now, it's just the question of over. is it olive or is it not olive, okay? Okay, yeah. everybody, this is just everybody, not just Robin. Top, is the word top olive or not olive? Olive. Okay, look around the room. I don't see any thumbs down, right? That was pretty fast. Okay, so we all kind of agree, don't we? that top is an olive word, okay? I'll put that there. How about problem? Problem, problem. Does it match olive sock problem? Are they all the same? Thumbs up if yes, thumbs down if not. Olive sock problem, great. Um, Neil, could you say olive sock problem for us? <laughs> olive sock problem. Great. And is that olive for you? No. <laughs> yes, it is. It's for him, yes. Yeah. So it's still olive, even though Neil is, is this British speaker of English, 
he still uses olive for this word. I think that's worth noting. Okay, good. How about cough? Everybody just thumbs up or thumbs down. Cough. Olive sock cough. Do they match or not? Look at the thumbs. Look around. And we see thumbs down. I see thumbs up. I see it all over the place. And we'll go with um, Bev. Bev, are you kind of in the middle here? Is that what that is? Or is it definitely down? Okay. Definitely down. Bev, would you say cough for us? Olive sock and then cough? We want to hear that. Cough? Uh-huh. Say olive, sock, and then cough. Olive, sock, cough. So cough is different for you? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's not for you, it's not olive. Great, let's all do these together. Responsible, olive or not olive? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Responsible. Olive, sock, responsible. I see thumbs up, I see, see thumbs down. I see mostly, I'm going to go with the majority on this one, responsible. Let's try that. Olive, sock, responsible. Yeah, responsible. Good. Um, wonderful. How about the next one? Implausible. That means like not quite believable, right? Implausible. Implausible. I see a lot of thumbs down from some people. Uh, for me, it is olive. Uh, for Robin and for um, Bev, where are you from again? Remind us. I always ask you. Who, me? Um, I grew up in New Jersey. So, no, it would be um, not olive. Okay, uh, not olive. Yeah, good. All righty. Um, how about taller? Taller, everybody. Still olive. everybody. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Does tall match olive or not? And I see Skip over there. I know he's from Maryland. I see others, Sinem and... Um, I see Scott. Okay, a lot of thumbs down. So let's put taller over here, not olive. Okay, what about father? Father, father, father. Father. Oh, interesting. Neil. So father, is that tomato for you, Neil? <laughs> Neither. Yeah, I'm gonna, him, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to put this otherwise over here for just a moment, father. And I want to try this. And it doesn't mean it's perfect because, again, we all have different perception. That's very important. And there are more than one right answer. There are two answers here, at least, and in some cases, three, okay? So let's try flooding. And that means take out your hand and we'll say olive sock, top, problem, responsible, father. Okay? We should hear that olive sound in all of the words. <laughs> okay, good. And then we take these words, call, cough, implausible and taller and i'm going to borrow those words and put them right down here and ask you interesting why won't those come with me i'm going to ask you okay they don't want to ah, i see <laughs> they're going to play a trick on me today we're going to win though um oh lord well we're going to take those four and ask you what color are they Okay, so what color is call if it's not olive? Now, we have a lot of people in the room, so I'm going to walk you through this answer, okay? If the word call, that was here, call, is not, in fact, olive, it's going to be another color on the chart, and I'm going to do my best to give this a color, see what we can do here. Oh, let's not play with this. So call will end up being this sound here called Auburn dog. Now I'm going to say this word with just my mouth and no voice. So we have olive, sock, and auburn, dog, ah, all, ah, all. Is that pretty good, Robin? It's okay? So what's happening here is if you look on the chart, you'll notice this is a gray line. And for some speakers of English, these are the same sound. For some speakers of English, these are both one sound. And in Blue Canoe, that's why we only give or olive as a sound, because you can master olive and you will be understood in English. And it's correct for learners, for speakers too. So I'm from a part of the United States in North America where I only use olive. I don't use this other sound. 
Okay, I some others. <laughs> Yeah, some others use it. So Robin, you want to add? Uh, you do use the sound, you just don't think you do. There we go. So when I said all <laughs> a little bit earlier, I actually used Auburn. Um, yes, I'm, not, I'm not aware of it. It's a very complex idea for a learner of English that uh, there are different variations of a sound. But that's how I want you to think of it if you're a learner, a user of Blue Canoe, um, that we might have this variation, but olive is functional for everybody. Okay, um, so then the next question comes, and we'll take questions here, by the way. The next question I have for you is another sort of guessing game, and I'm going to show you the game. Here's the game. Is it rose or is it not rose? That's my question for you. So now you'll listen to words and tell me, is it rose or not rose? And I'm watching you for thumbs up and thumbs down, and we will go with the majority vote if I can, okay? Here we are, nose. Is it rose or not rose? Rose, boat, nose. Matches, okay, so I see a lot of yes. Cold, rose, boat, cold. I love watching, I'm watching Sinem. I see others sort of thinking and listening. That's what I, I'm looking for is really listening, yes. Cold is also rose. What about four? Rose, boat, four. All of a sudden, I see a bunch of thumbs down. I see Monica and Neil. A lot of the native speakers in the room are saying, no, it's not rose. But I see other hands going up. It is rose, even native speakers. And so I'm going to go with the doubt. I'll put four over here for now, OK? Focus, rose, boat, focus. Rose or not rose? Okay, rose. Report, rose, boat, report. Do they match? Is it the same sound three times or is it a deal breaker? I see some thumbs down. Okay, how about store? Rose, boat, store. Also, Jean, a nice big strong thumbs down. She's like, thumbs down. All right, poster. Rose or not rose? Poster. Okay, poster is a yes. And disposal is a yes. All right, so now these three words, for, report, and store. If they're not rose, what are they? For, report, and store. I can put them here for us. I'll put store. Okay, let's just take one of these. They're all or words, so we'll just use that, okay? And um, so where can I put this? And now I want you to go to the chat and tell me where you want it, because I think we're going to be interested in the answers. So go to the chat, please. Where should I put store? Please vote down in the chat. Is it that I can't put it in, I'm not going to put it in rows, or maybe I will. If you vote for rows, I could still do that. But where else could I put it? Where else could I put it? Okay, I'm watching the chat. Here we go. Waiting for your votes. Orange, orange, orange. Oh boy, some of these, some of these are funny. Okay, orange, orange. So we have a lot of votes for orange, okay? Um, so now I have to ask, for how many of you do you want it to be somewhere else. Does anybody else? Well, want to... Karen, somebody points out, Neil points out that orange and door are not even the same for him. Right, good. Okay, so this is it, is that for some of us, orange door will work in its entirety, right? Orange and door rhyme, and then the next word also rhymes. However, for some of us, we might say orange or orange door. Is that the case with you? For some of you, good. And so in the case of that, you can still use this color, but just pay attention to the door, the second part. So you'd say orange door store. You have the second and the third beat that will match, okay? For some of us, we're able to use all three beats, all three parts. And for some of us, it's just the two. So we'll say orange door store, okay? But I want you to know that some of us, if we, didn't, if we didn't have orange, that's my question for you. If we didn't have orange on the chart, 
where would we put store? If we said it's not rose, and if I tell you now that we cannot use orange use because orange. it's not there, where should I put it now? Where could it go? Yeah, we're looking here in the chat, see if we have any ideas. Someone has said uh, olive and someone has said mustard. Okay, star, star. Ah, if we do, if we put it in olive, it will become star. If we put it in mustard, it's a word that we don't have. Star, star. It would sound, basically we would hear star. It would sound like star, okay? Um, how many of you feel comfortable, native speakers in the room, putting um, store down here in Auburn? Okay, somebody, uh, Neil has a comment, is that okay? Sure. Okay, Neil, go for it. Yes, you have to unmute yourself. Yeah, come on in, there you go. Yep, yeah, for me, it, it would go in Auburn. Yeah. So, store, Auburn. But then Auburn and dog don't rhyme for me as well. So. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. So you can use the Auburn part and we have, we have some other offerings for you. But um, so we, we can put it down here and move it. Store, store, right? Now, Kalpana's saying wooden hook. Uh, wow. If we put it all the way up here in wooden hook, it definitely would start to sound different. St store, store. Um, store. It could work. It could work. You know, there's a, this is an area in the mouth. It's, it's really a lot of work of the, the tongue in the back of the mouth. It's a very small space. Remember that the chart is, you know, a special kind of angle. It's, it doesn't actually work quite in this fashion because our mouths are an angle, right? So back here in the back of where our mouths shut and open, <laughs> this is a very cramped space and the tongue is doing a great deal of work to manipulate the space. So yeah, this is, a lot of this is very possible. Store, store, store. I won't use stoyer, stoyer, no, yeah. not so much. Not that. Store. You hear how all of these are actually very plausible, okay? Orange came into the chart, everybody, because students and learners kept asking for it. Uh, many of many English speakers from my dialect uh, can use orange door easily, but it's the learners that kept asking for it to be here. And so we included in the chart, even though it's not in blue canoe, because what it really is, is Rose or Auburn, depending on the way people speak. And so we have a simple way with the chart to address these R moving sounds. So you can use any of these and they will all work. And if that's a surprising answer, um, you have to remember that there are many right ways to speak English. I'll take questions now. This is a short session and it's, you know, we, we covered a lot. So I do expect some good questions. Let's take a look. There are some interesting comments from the British speakers who say, yes, it's Auburn, but their Auburn is all and not aw. So yes, you're right. And the reason, and I think, um, who was it? Uh, Jeannie, I, I didn't catch who it was. It said, um, why doesn't orange door work the same thing as, I don't know, uh, pear or um, chair, you know, cherry chair or, or something like that. Why don't, why do we have one for or but not the corresponding one for air? And the reason is that in North American English, we have a beginning for the air, red pepper air, yeah. or possibly gray day air, if you say it that way. But we don't have the corresponding sound for, uh, in the back for um, all, orange door we don't have the beginning of the or it's the same that starts the oi and the o and the or are all the same sound but we don't have it by itself the way we have the front vowel eh. so that's why some people need a separate orange uh yeah. color to that's make that right. clearer 
And so, yeah, I think, you know, we, we want to provide our users and learners tonight with something useful. And what you can know is that we provide you with rows and it may not feel, it, it might work for you or you may feel it doesn't quite fit. But if you take the, if you know that O, O, O is a moving sound that moves up to blue, O, if you take the movement off of it and instead move it to purple, everyone try that, O, just the position, a rounded O, 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 and now move it to purple, O, R, O, R, and that is a functional or sound for store, before, more, horse, etc. Okay, so Karen, blue, you'll see a lot of the rose mark there. Yes, we have a question from Orange Door Cora about mm -hmm. how do I best explain this to the students regarding regional accents. I always come back to the statement that there are many right ways to speak, and that native speakers speak in lots of different ways. The important thing to remember is we understand each other. And so we're giving you permission to use, take turquoise out of that question there, okay? Because it's shooting across this way, oi. But the others are perfectly useful for any of the R control, anything that's or related. And, and that's kind of how I would answer it the first time. It's not simple because the chart and what we do is to connect speakers of English who speak differently. And that's different from all other pronunciation education in the past that tends to tell you how you should speak. So we're, we're taking a kind of very democratic approach to the way this works. We want to understand each other. We want to and do respect each other. And we can use the chart to describe how we speak and discover how you speak. And if you're a learner, we'll guide you into the possibilities. Store is definitely not a red word. It's not stare because that's a different word. It's not star because that's a different word. It's not steer because that's also a different word. But it can be store, store, stower, store, you could even come up here, and all of this is going to be comprehensible, understood, and, and accepted, okay? Long answer to a short question. Thank you. Yeah, um, there's a comment here from Monica, um, walk and walk, yeah. So uh, Monica, I think you are somebody who has the same vowel sound here, right? And so you have only uh, olive in your dialect. <laughs> Great. Talk to a New Yorker and you will, Grace says. Um, and I didn't catch whose comment it was. Gray says it's a tool to help learn pronunciation, not a ruler to judge whether you're right or wrong. That's right. And so, yeah, teachers, I invite you now. Uh, I know the learners are interested in more than one teacher. Uh, what do you tell your students when they ask about orange or about olive and auburn you can pick your your discussion point luckily Any i i taught i teach with more than one person and we have different dialects so i can say well i'm from chicago i say it this way um so and so is from mississippi he says it that way and so forth and having more than one dialect to to point at uh means that they understand that there's no single correct version as long as they're like one of us or, or one of the other of us. Exactly. Even our use of the word dialect, we use in a democratic way, meaning all of us speak a dialect of English. Nobody owns the language. It's an international language. And so we have to understand that this, this will have some variation around the world. But we're looking for the piece that's mutual. Okay. Wonderful. Well, I want to thank everybody for coming tonight. It's a, it's a fabulous audience. Uh, we do this uh, every Thursday for teachers. And then once a month, we have a Thursday for learners to come into the room. And if you've looked around the room, you see what a wonderfully diverse room we do have. I think I wanted to say, I think I see our visitor from Brazil. We have Japan represented. 
we've got so many places and i if you didn't get a chance to tell us where you're calling in from please put that in the chat we like to know where you're coming from okay? is the person from brazil the one who said chef brazil chef i'm very chef brazil, yeah uh -huh. yeah wonderful uh, where else do we, and as we say goodbye, just please write that in the chat. We look forward to seeing you again. These are always short, they're sweet. We post the recordings up on our website and you will receive an email with that recording. So thank you so much. Be safe, continue to be healthy, and we'll see you next time. Okay, bye-bye everybody, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye Alejandra, bye Janet, bye Robert, Ale. Renu, Hao, Yui, Christina, Thank you. goodbye. Bye. Thank you. Bye, Neil. Bye, Karen. Bye, everyone. Thank bye, you. Jet. Bye. Good night. Good night. Bye. Hey, Mark, nice poster. Oh, yeah. Oh, you know, <laughs> I wanted to. All kids have one. I wanted to show people my setup. I don't know if you can ah. see my setup. It's. Oh. It's. Um, here, hold on.